we're always trying to make Spot smarter. So we're trying to constantly improve its ability to interact with and understand the world around it. I work on the Spot Autonomy team. And since I joined, I've been working a lot with integrating deep learning into our perception stack for Spot. Spot has five stereo cameras. It largely sees the world through those. We mostly use the depth data from those cameras to generate a 3D map of the surroundings. From that data, we can run some heuristic classifiers to determine things like where the ground is or where there are obstacles where the robot can't go. Currently, the way Spot really understands the world is it's looking and figuring out what space around it is occupied. So it's saying, you know, okay, there's a wall here, so that space is filled in, there's floor there, that's empty space. And based off of the space that's occupied, it's deciding, is this something I can step on? You know, can I put my foot here? Can I step over it? So maybe it's like a little high, you know, like you don't want to put the foot on it, but you can go over, or is it like, you know, a wall? Can I, you know, just an option, I can't go through it at all. The number one nemesis for Spot are wires and similar thin objects. This is because they're hard to see and distinguish. The geometry itself might get lost altogether. It's hard to infer that, oh, it's probably okay to step on it. When in reality, you know, if you get your leg caught under a wire, you're gonna trip, you're gonna start dragging things around. There are also things that are more to do with really the semantics of the object. You can imagine a cart in Spot's path. That looks exactly like a platform. Without knowing that it's a cart, without knowing there are wheels on it, it looks like just a raised surface that you could step on, step off. And it's only knowing that it's a cart that you know, oh, if I put my foot on it, the cart might shoot out, I could trip, bad things could happen. Anyone who's been paying attention to the news, you're hearing about AI, deep learning, neural networks. So about a year ago, a lot of us at the company started playing around with this flurry of visual foundation models that have been coming out. To really get that general level understanding of the world, you need tons of data. You're talking about internet scale data, billions of examples, something that you can't train yourself per se. And so you don't want to have to gather all that data for every application. And so what a foundation model is, it's already been trained on all that data. Maybe not for a specific task. A lot of times all they're learning is to draw associations, you know, like this text relates to that text, this image relates to that text, this image relates to that image. But it sees all of that data, and then you can use that to train a model on top of it or fine tune it for a downstream task that you actually care about with far less data. So you can take all of that foundation, all, you know, all that understanding of the world, and then adapt it to the thing you actually want to solve without having to go through the whole process of you know, trying to re-understand the world. Hazard avoidance is important because it's the first step into adding some sort of semantic understanding to the world in addition to our geometric understanding. A lot of the times we can filter out data that we think is too sparse, but if we can identify that that data is a part of some hazard or something that is important to like recognize is there, then we can utilize it for navigation. So in the past, you kind of had to limit spot to a path. You had to sort of say, only go in these known locations that are safe, uh, because if it veers off those, it might encounter the hazards we've described. Someone might have left, you know, my, I left my box of tools and a bunch of wires on the ground. Hey, I'm moving some boxes so my carts cross the hallway. Whereas before it might step on the car, get itself tangled, it'll avoid them. You know, when it's going down the hall, if we tell it, you know, this is a thing you should not step on, not step over, it'll know that and it'll be able to more reliably and, you know, from a human perspective, more comfortably get to where it's going. So we're starting from models that we just, you know, got off the shelf. These things that have been trained on internet scale data that already have a great understanding of the world. What we really want to be doing is using this to jumpstart Spot's own ability to train and understand the world better. But because we're running these and we're constantly processing the data and we can look and see what it was doing and use that to train our own foundation models that are targeted towards what Spot is trying to do, the customers, they're gonna see it just get better and better. They're gonna see it able to understand more of the things they want it to understand. They're gonna see it have a more human level understanding of the world. And honestly, the sky's the limit.